YouTube family, how are you doing? Uh, one big hug from me to you, my uh, brothers and sisters, and I, I pray you're having a good day and that you are walking with the Lord Jesus Christ right now and that you haven't strayed away. Uh, today on this video, I'm going to talk on two topics. I'm going to talk about the the rapture, uh, which is uh, a lot of people don't know if it's pre, post, or uh, is pre, post, or at the very end. Um, I'm going to talk about the husbandman uh, parable that our Lord Jesus Christ uh, left us. Um, and I just want to say that uh, I am so happy that our Lord Jesus Christ is still sitting on the throne. That's where he belongs. That was his place that was always set aside for him from the before the universe existed. That was going to be his place. He's sitting at the right hand of God. He has all power in the entire universe. And there's nobody that can ever take that power away from him. It is his. The devil will always want to come and take that power away. Every time he gets a chance. But he, we, we know how the... How the end of the book of Revelation ends where he is uh, cast in the lake of fire and he's going to be tormented like everybody else that doesn't want to accept the free gift of eternal salvation. That's all Jesus Christ is offering you guys is a free gift of eternal salvation, a free gift of eternal salvation. He's not ask, he's not offering anything else except that who wouldn't want to have eternal life in heaven. You know, a lot of people think that heaven is just going to be a boring place where we're just on top of a cloud and we're playing a harp and we're just doing this for uh, however many years eternity is and it, it doesn't have an end. You know, that's not what we're going to be doing in heaven. We're going to be talking to our loved ones. Imagine here on this earth, we can't do that as much as we would want to because we're working. And then when we do get the chance to talk with our loved ones, nine times out of ten, we usually mess it, mess it up because of the flesh. We say something we should not say. And that's not how it's going to be in heaven. In heaven, there ain't going to be no more flesh that's going to be getting in the way. We're going to talk to our loved ones how we've always wanted to talk to our loved ones on this earth, you know. Well, with uh, And really mean and really want to spend time talking with that person. And not just our loved ones. Other fellow believers in Christ, we're going to get to talk to them and get to know them that were on the other side of the world, like in uh, North Korea, South Korea, China, you know, we're going to get to talk with them and then, you know, that part of the world right now is being persecuted so hard by the, by the, by the enemy, all our fe fellow brothers and sisters over there, we need to pray for them in China. We need to pray for them in North Korea. Because if you get caught over there reading the Bible, praying, or even trying to make a video like I am right now, they'll send you into a work camp. Who knows what else they'll do to you. So we need to pray for our family on that side of the world. Because we are just a one big family that is everywhere in the world. You know, we need to pray for them because God, Jesus Christ, came for all of us. Not just for certain groups of people. All of us, including the Israelites. All of us. He came, he died for all of us. And, uh, and and I am also happy that our, our Lord Jesus Christ calls me friend. He calls me his friend. Why does he call me his friend? He calls me his friend because he lets us know what's going to come on this earth, in this book, in the Bible. He lets us know what uh, the pestilence, the famines, the rumors of wars, nation rising up against nation he tells us all of it right here why so we will not be surprised when it comes on the scene we can't say lord it would have been nice if you could have told us this and he does and that's why he calls us his friends because he doesn't want to keep anything from us he wants to let us know how everything is going to play out in the world up to the last day and that's why when when abraham was with our lord jesus christ and then our lord jesus christ is like should I withheld this from Abraham knowing that he's going to become a big and mighty nation? And he decided to tell Abraham what he was going to do to Sodom and Gomorrah because he called him his friend. Abraham was the friend of the Lord. And so he told him. And, he, and, and, and Abraham, who, who, who would have known 
that Abraham would have entreated for those two towns the way he did down to the tenth guy. He said, if there's ten righteous men in that city, will you not spare that city for those ten righteous sake? And Jesus Christ said, if I can find ten righteous men in, 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 in that city, I will spare that city. And we all know what happened the very next morning. Smoke was a was was uh was going up to heaven and we knew that God had destroyed those two towns. How many people were there? The Bible doesn't give an exact amount, but I'm thinking it was a pretty good amount of people there and he destroyed them all. He uh but he saved his nephew Lot. Lot was saved out of out of out of, out of Sodom, but not because he was so righteous and so uh, godly man that God said, go and get him out. No, Lot got saved out of that town by the skin of his teeth. He barely made it out. He made it out barely out of there. It's not because he was a, he was a super Christian and always praying and fasting. And that's why he got, no, he, he barely made it out. And if you would have looked back while... Everything was going on. He he would have turned into a pillar of salt like his wife. You know, his wife looked back because that's where she was raised. That's the town she's always loved, you know. And, and she just could not bear the thought that God was going to destroy the town she was raised in. And that's why she looked back. She wanted to get that one last look. You know how you want to get that last look of your, of your town when you're uh, leaving to visit another state on vacation with your family? You always want that last look of the town you're about to leave. So you look back and see it one last time. But God had warned them, don't look back. Don't look back. And they didn't obey God. You know, and that's a lot of us. Sometimes God is telling us, don't look back. You know, because we know there ain't nothing good back there. There's nothing good back there. But a lot of the times we're constantly peeking, constantly trying to see back there. You know, when God is telling us, just look forward, you know, look Look at your present and look forward. Don't look back. And a lot of us can't do that. And that's why his wife turned into a pillar of salt. He had to go into the next town of Zor and live in a cave in a mountain. And you, we know what happened there with his two daughters. They got him drunk. They both got pregnant. And that's where the, uh, that's where the Moabite children come from and the Ammonite children. They come from his two daughters which are two very wicked wicked nations that always war against Israel you know and that just there should let you know that Lot's family really wasn't all that they were cracked up to be you know they were very wicked people you know and when you start to think about it in the in the way that 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 Lot's own daughters got his dad drunk to sleep with him. That should let you know that those two girls weren't really good girls, you know. I, who in their right mind would say, let's get our dads drunk? He wasn't the, the last man on the earth. God, God did not wipe the entire. He just wiped out Sodom and Gomorrah. There was still a bunch of, a bunch of Israelites out there that they could have eventually married, you know. That, that that they could have had their own children, but they decided to get their dad drunk. Why? Because they were afraid, oh, my dad, dad ain't not going to have a seat to take on his name, you know, which is, which ain't true because if those, you know, girls would have got married, you know, they, his lot seed was going to still be, be, be here because of the, they would have had probably male and, and female babies, you know, so. So that wasn't true that his his seed was going to be like the father. And a lot of people might see it that those girls did something righteous. There's nothing righteous in laying down with your dad. You know, they didn't do no righteous act. And in the Bible, I don't see where God says, and those two women were commended for their righteous deed. You know, that's just God letting us know that's too, that, that Lot and his family were wicked. They weren't as a lot of people make them out to be. And once you read the Bible, once you start learning about the spiritual realm, and once you start reading it carefully, like I said, who would lay down with their dad in the right mind? And not just lay down with him, but we're going to get him drunk. You know, if you are a believer in Christ, if you are a Christ, if you if you say you follow Jesus Christ, why why would you why would you not know that 
you're drinking alcohol. I could tell if I'm drinking alcohol or not. By the time I pick that stuff up and put it in my mouth, I know if it's beer or if it's liquor or if it's whatever, you know, because I used to do it. I used to be in the world. So how am I going to pick up a beer and I spit it out and just keep on drinking like nothing until until the late, late night hours of the night and it's 2, 3 in the morning and I'm already so drunk. I can barely get up the chair. You know, now my daughter, the you know, the oldest is fixing to lay down with me. Not that he knew, but... Why are you getting drunk if you're a Christian? You're not supposed to get drunk. And he didn't just do it once. He got drunk one night. The oldest laid down with him. He got drunk the second night. And the youngest laid down with him. He got drunk back to back. You know? So that that's why it lets me think that Lot wasn't really living how he should have been living when he was in that town. I mean, you got wickedness all over, all around you. Every your neighbors just looking out the window, you see your neighbors just being wicked and then your other neighbors over there being wicked and everybody's being wicked. And, and I can only imagine what Lot was doing there while he was living there. But that was the grace of God because Abraham asked them, Lord, please save Lot. And that's why our Lord Jesus Christ sent those two angels to go and get Lot out of that town before God destroyed it. And uh, so now I'm going to talk about Pre, post, or present? You know, is it is it is it, is, it, is, it, is the rapture gonna be pre, meaning before the seven year tribulation start? Is it gonna be post? Is it gonna be uh, at the end of the seven year tribulation, or is it gonna be in the middle, which is in the present? You know. Um, you decide, you know. So we're going to just go to chapter 24 of Matthew. And we're going to read verses 29 through 31. And it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So immediately after the tribulation, the sun's going to be darkened. And the moon will not give her light like she normally does. You know, they say the, that the sun is going to turn into sackcloth and the moon is going to turn into blood, which is already has been happening. The sun hasn't been darkened, but the moon has been turned to blood a few times already. And it's not going to give the same light that the moon uh, has been giving. You know, and, uh, and that's... Uh, you know, and, the, and that's when our Lord is going to be coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. You know, and I believe that. Then he's gonna, and, and then he's going to call on his angelic army to uh, gather his people from the four corners of the earth. You know, let's say there's a billion angels. And let's say when Jesus Christ comes... There is a billion true believers of our Lord Jesus Christ sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit and everything, you know. Uh, a billion. So it will take an angel, just one angel, to pick everybody up and fly. And that's it. Everybody's out. How fast could that happen? In the blink of an eye. You know, ev everything can happen in the blink of an eye. Because those angels, they when they fly, I think they go, they fly faster than the speed of sound. So, okay, a billion angels, a billion Christians, boom, we're out in a blink of an eye. We're all gone, and then the Jesus Christ starts to destroy this whole earth and starts to kill people left and right, and, you know, and because a lot of people think that it's going to take a long time that, 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 that Jesus is going to be like coming out our doors, knocking on our doors, 
Are you ready? Jesus Christ ain't gonna do that. He's gonna come and take you. He's gonna snatch you out of here like a thief. That's why he says he's gonna come as a thief in the night. And a yeah, and 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 we know what a thief does at night. He comes in and does what he's gonna take in a blink of an eye. He he took all, all your stuff in your house. You wake up, you don't have nothing. All the time you were asleep, because it happens that fast. And that's why our Lord is gonna come and snatch us out of here. Why? And that's and and I believe that's why it is so important that the enemy doesn't know. He knows the time clock, the enemy, but he doesn't. There's a gap that he doesn't know of the exact day that Jesus Christ is coming, and that gap could be one year or two years, and that's a big difference when you're living on this earth. So that's why I believe the enemy doesn't know because if the enemy knew the exact day, because remember, the enemy doesn't know when Jesus Christ is coming back. Just like Jesus Christ himself, he doesn't know. Just like the angels don't know. Just like no human being on this earth knows. Because I believe if the devil knew the exact day that Jesus Christ was coming back, he would try to implement everything faster, like the mark of the beast. You know, and the one world religion. He will try to implement that f faster. Because since he doesn't know, Jesus Christ is going to come and snatch a billion of us out of here without him even knowing. He's going to look around and be like, where did those one million people went? They're gone. You know, and that's why it's, it's going to happen. Like the Lord Jesus Christ says, like a thief in the night, he's going to come and just snatch us away. He's going to. And the, and the, it could happen in the night. It could happen in the daytime. But if it does happen at night. Jesus Christ is going to be, he's going to come like a thief in the night. He's going to come and snatch us all out of here. All one billion of us. We're, our loved ones ain't even going to probably know when we're, when, when we're going to be snatched out of here. It's just going to be that fast. You know, and uh, we got to be careful, you know, because the enemy, if he would have known, he would implement laws on this earth that, that would be so horrendous for the believer in Christ. So now we're going to go to um, Mark 13. Mark chapter 13. Because if, 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 you, if you were the one being broken into, you would stop that thief immediately if you would have known what time the thief was going to come. And that's what the enemy would do if he knew the, the, the day and second and the hour that our Lord was going to come. He would stop him. In other words, he ain't going to take those a billion people out. Why? Because the enemy knows that that day Jesus Christ is coming and he's going to do everything he can with all his demonic f forces to try to make at least 500 million of them commit a sin that day that is just so horrible that those people will feel like they don't deserve God's grace and they don't deserve God's forgiveness and that's how he would keep those half a billion on this earth while the other half got to leave remember the there's 10 uh the the parable of the 10 virgin girls five stayed in and five left you know and so that's why I think uh the Lord is going to do how he's going to come like a thief in the night. There's no other way to do it. He has to come in so subtle. Not that he's afraid of Satan. Because, but, but because he wants to take that 500 million extra with him when he comes. And that's a lot of people. Glory to God. Huh? Mark 13 verses 24 through 24. Through 27 and it says but in those days after the tribulation the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the son of man coming in the clouds with great power and glory and then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Amen. You know, that's just repeating what the book of Matthew I just read. And 
you know, because the word of God says out of the mouth of two witnesses, let everything be established. So that's why the Lord repeats it sometimes two or three times because he's letting you know there's two or three people that are agreeing, are agreeing that that's how, what's going to happen. And that's and that's how is, everything is established in heaven by people agreeing here on this earth how it's going to happen, you know, and that's Matthew and Mark agreeing that that's how it's going to happen and it's being established and that's how it is going to happen. And the next verse is, uh, and what I say is Mark uh, 13, chapter 13, verse 37. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Here he's saying what he is telling you, he's telling it to everybody to watch. He's not saying just for the Israelites to watch or just for the Gentiles to watch. He's saying all, everybody in the world, you need to watch. And be ready for that day. He let he uh, Jesus loves us. That he lets us know what's gonna come on this earth. He lets us know in more than one gospel what he's fixing to do. And uh, John fifteen, I think it's John. Let's go to John fifteen. I think it's fifteen or sixteen. We're fixing to see right now. 15, let's see, okay, so it has to be 16, it says, but 16, chap chapter 16, verse 4 says, but these things have I told you that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them, and these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you, you know, this is Jesus Christ, uh, He's telling us, he's letting us know what's going to come on this earth. He's letting us know. And then John, it says, don't get mad when trouble comes and you are still here and not raptured. You know, don't get mad when the wars start and we're still here on this earth and we're not, we haven't been raptured, you know, because Jesus Christ never in his entire Bible did he ever promise us we weren't, we weren't going to go through trouble he's saying but throughout the whole bible through much tribulation we should go through to get into the kingdom of heaven jesus christ never said you're never going to go through trouble and he doesn't you don't find it in the bible and john 16 chapter 16 verse 33 says these things i have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace and the world you shall have tribulation, but be of but be of good cheer and have overcome the world. And he surely has done. Jesus Christ. Um, excuse me, Bobby. Excuse me. Jesus Christ has overcome the world. He defeated the world. He was in this world. He was tempted by that by the enemy in every way the devil tempts man and Jesus Christ still didn't sin Jesus Christ overcame the world and that should make us glad because if he can overcome it we can overcome it too with the Holy Spirit not by ourselves with the Holy Spirit so he said be of good cheer because I have overcome the world and amen that should make us so happy the world cannot keep our Lord Jesus Christ down the world cannot make Jesus Christ sin he overcame the world you know, you will have trouble, but be happy because your Lord overcame the world. Amen. And now we're going to go to uh, Acts, Acts 14, 22. So let's go to Acts 14, 22. Right there, 14, 22. And it says, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Through much tribulation, we should enter into the kingdom of God. That's our Lord Jesus Christ letting us know one more time. We must go through a lot of tribulation. Now we're going to go to Romans Romans 11. And we're going to go to uh, verse 7. Romans 11. It says, What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, 
but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. It says Israel has not obtained what, what, when Jesus Christ came, he came first to the house of Israel. The house of Israel rejected Jesus Christ, so then he turned into, unto the Gentiles with Paul to preach to the Gentiles. And, and we have obtained it. The, the, it says, but the election hath obtained it. We have obtained it. And the rest were blinded. Talking about Israel. The rest of Israel were blinded. And they didn't obtain it. And I'm going to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, 51 and 52. And it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen. In the twinkling of an eye, when Jesus Christ come at the last trump, and you hear the last trumpet, in the twinkling of an eye, a little twinkle, everybody's changed that fast in the entire universe. It says that the... That the dead shall be raised incorruptible, the ones that are already buried. And we, the ones that are alive, shall be changed also. So that is awesome news. That it all it's all going to happen so fast. Now we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 7, 4. And it says, Great is my boldness of speech towards you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful. In all our tribulation, we should rejoice when we're going through tribulations because that's how you know that the Lord is with you and that the enemy hates you. When you're going through so much tribulation, you don't know why things are happening to you that you're like, God, I try my best every day. I read your word. I pray. I I go to church. I tithe. I I'm witnessing out here to lost souls. And why am I going through all this? Because you have an enemy, the the devil. He's going to try to oppose you every single day. He's going to try to make your life a misery, miserable on this earth. But stay strong. Don't give in. We got the Holy Spirit. It doesn't last forever. It says resist the devil and he will flee. Yeah, he will flee, but it doesn't say forever. He will come back. And he always comes back. And if we give him a chance or an opportunity for him to come back, oh, he's going to take that opportunity and run in. He ain't going to ask you twice, am, am I able to come in? He's just going to come in. First, Thessalonians, Galatians, Thessalonians, uh, chapter 4, 13 and 18. And it says, 13 through 18, and it says, But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with a trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You know, and this is basically kind of repeating to what I just read with the people that are asleep, you know, and that the that the dead shall rise first. Why is are the dead rising first? That's how God wants it. That's how our Lord Jesus Christ wants it. The dead are going to be raised up first, and then we will be caught up with them in the air. Okay? That's how the Lord wants to do it. It's his world. It's his universe. And then I'm going to read chapter 5, verse 2, and it says... For yourselves know perfectly that that day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. How I was saying. He's coming as a thief in the night. He's going to snatch us all up like a thief. So we got to be ready because it could happen right now. It could happen to, to, and when we're going to bed tomorrow. There's no day set. So that's uh, 
Then Second Thessalonians 2, verses 3 and 4, and it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. You know, for, this day ain't going to come until it says that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, the Antichrist. He has to be revealed first. So it says, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that's happening in, in around the world right now, the, the falling away of ch churches, of people. And, and, you know, a lot of people in church are like, I've been following Jesus Christ for 20, 30 years. Nothing has happened. So I'm just going to take a detour and, 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 and give pleasure to the flesh. Not knowing if you're going to make it back. If the Lord might come when you're on that detour, you ain't, you ain't going to go. You're going to stay behind. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Okay? That has to come first before the great day. And I, I see the falling away happening right before my eyes. Uh, everything that's going on in America with churches, you know, that's just the enemy. And uh, <clears throat> now I'm going to go to Second Timothy. Let's go to Second Timothy. 4, 1, and 8, and it says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Amen. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Amen. That's what we're all waiting for. We're all waiting for his appearing. You know, I've been in the I've, I've been in uh, I've been a believer for almost eight years and let me tell you that is something I look forward to every single day is for Jesus Christ to come out of those clouds and take his people home and I don't want to be taken out of here because I can't go on another day I just I'm looking for his appearing he said he was gonna come back and he's gonna come back and how awesome it would be out of all Excuse me, Lord. Out of all the people that have lived on this earth, that we get to see him coming in the clouds. Out of all the people that ever lived, <laughs> let me tell you, that'll be a terror, a terror to see if you're not right with God. If you're not right with God, I, I, I pray that you would start seeking him because when that day comes, and you don't have a relationship with him, and you see a man just coming in the clouds of heaven, you'll be like, you'll be wiping your eyes and say, am I seeing that? Is that a man coming in? Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, he's not coming back meek, meek and gentle like he did the first time when he came on this earth 2,000 years ago. He's coming with him. His, 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 fire, his eyes are a flame of fire. He's coming mad. Why is he mad? Because of everything that's going on in the world right now, where... Christians are being persecuted at a level that they've never been persecuted before in the history of the church. They're passing laws after law that make it harder for people to worship in the house of God. Uh, and the list just goes on and on. And that's what Jesus Christ, when he comes, he's coming angry. He's coming. You know how a horse, when a, when a king comes to conquer a nation, he doesn't come. You know, blazing like that. Like, who does that? You know, who conquers a, another kingdom? And, uh, that's just you not being smart if you think that's how, that's how uh, kingdoms in the world are conquered. The king comes, like, barely moving. Why? Because he knows who he is. And because he knows what army is, is behind me. And if you got, let's say, a million plus soldiers ready to die for you, you know, you don't have to run. All you got to do is walk. And you let your enemy, as they see this multitude come towards them, you know, you're like, mm, I think we should just surrender in peace. And then, you know, you fall asleep and then you wake up because he's, he's moving slow. He's not moving fast. He's moving slow. 
Then the next morning you're like, no, I think we can take him on. And then the day he, he you fall asleep again and in the morning and you start to see them closer and closer and closer and then you start to see the multitude and then you're like, well, I think we're going to surrender and that'll be the wisest choice if you know you're outnumbered three to one and two to one, however many you're outnumbered. And that's how Jesus is going to come. He's like, he's coming slow because he knows he has all this angelic being hosts coming with him. And he knows he could do it all by himself. With just one word out of his mouth, he could kill everybody on this earth. But he's, he's, he's coming slow because he's mad. And you know when you're mad, uh, upset, and you know when you get to the point you're going to get to and do whatever it is you're going to do, you don't rush to get there. And if you do it, like I said, it's because... <laughs> You just let the flesh take over and you're just being consumed by anger. But a lot of the times you, you take it slow, you, you think in your mind, what should I do? What's the right thing to do? You pray about it. And then once you get there, son, I have no choice, but I gotta, I gotta discipline you. And it's gonna take more than words to, to try to get my point across. You know, cause words I know are, are not gonna help you right now if you, if, 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 if if what I heard is true, words just ain't going to do, son. So, and that's how Jesus Christ is coming. Very slow. Very slow. He's in a hurry. He, you think it gives Jesus Christ pleasure to come and kill his, his entire creation? To wipe them out? You think it gives him pleasure to do that? No, but he's a righteous God and he has to do it. He can't let sin go unpunished. And, uh... And that's why we got to be ready. We got to have, we got to be ready. And we're going to go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter. Is it? Uh, no. Yeah, 1 Peter. First Peter. Uh, 4. 17 and 18 and it says for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God and if it first begin at us what shall the end uh, be of them that obey not the gospel of God and if the righteous scarcely be saved where shall the ungodly and the sinners appear so God is going to judge his house first because there's a lot of people in his house that are misbehaving right now. There's so many sins being done in his house that he, he's coming for his house first. He judges his house. He puts his house in order. But it says, if God is judging his house first, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? What will the end be for those people? If God is judging his house first, and there's a lot of people, let me tell you that, are going to be judged harshly in the house of God. They might not lose their salvation, but let me tell you, God is going to judge them harshly. They might still be saved. And there's a lot that probably won't, won't be saved, you know. Meaning that if Jesus were to come and he judges his house, and there's some acts that are going on in churches that are just an abomination in the eyes of God, those people ain't going to make it. He's going to judge them like if they were heathens, unbelievers. So we got to stay sanctified. We can't let our garments get wrinkled and spotted and dirty with this world. We got to keep them as white, whiter than snow is what the word of God says. Whiter than snow. We can't let our garments be defiled. We can't be defiled. We can't. And it says if the righteous, like let's say Abraham was righteous because it said that Abraham obeyed God and it was accounted for righteousness unto him. If Abraham was righteous and Abraham, the day he was dying, it was like, how can I, how can I see our Lord right now? I can't see him to, 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 I just can't look at him in his eyes because he knows everything about me. I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't, 
than to be judged by a loving God, you know? And, you know, there, like the word says, it is appointed unto man to die and then the judgment. That is true. But I believe Jesus Christ hasn't really judged nobody since the time of Adam and Eve. He has reserved that one day special day for when it says the books will be open. The book of the living and the book of the dead. And those two books are going to be brought in for our Lord Jesus Christ to look and read. And has everybody's name. The ones that are condemned and the ones that are alive. But he's going to start at his house first. So he has to get the book of the living. You know, he has to judge us out of the book of the living. Because his judgment starts at, a, at the house. But there is like, I'm, I'm thinking where you, when you die and you know, you know, the Lord might say, well done, good and faithful servant. And he opens up the gates and you walk in, you know, or he might say, depart from me. I never knew you, you know, you that practice uh, wickedness and lawlessness and iniquity. But if Abraham was like, I just, I don't know what the Lord's going to say. If he's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant or depart from me. And that's Abraham, you know, and that's why it says if the righteous be scarcely Scarcely be saved. Where shall the ungodly and the sinners appear? How is how is Abraham being afraid to be judged by God? And I, I'm just giving an example. You know, I don't know if he was or wasn't. But I am. You know, I am very afraid to be judged by God. <laughs> you don't know how scared I am. It's just, whew, I'm scared. Because I know his judgment is righteous. And if, if Abraham is afraid, how is a sinner... That has been living like hell itself. Say, okay, Jesus, judge me. Like, I mean, are you crazy? Are you just going to tell Jesus Christ that? Okay, I'm dead. Jesus, hurry up and judge me. Like, oh, man, I feel... I feel sorry for all those people that might think like that. That, okay, I, I, God can judge me. I haven't done nothing bad. You know, I'm good. You know, and you're not even a believer. You know, and you're still talking like that. And that's why I'm saying... Well, where where will the sinner appear? Like, <laughs> you know, like now we're gonna go to First uh, John two eighteen and twenty two, and it says, "Little children, it is the last time." And let me tell you, it is the last time. We're living in the last days. It is the last time, children. Children, it is the last time and as you have heard that antichrist shall come even now are there many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time and there is plenty of antichrists in this world there are so many antichrists but he's coming I, I believe he's here already you know don't take my word for it I'm just I'm nobody I'm just a pile of sand that's all I am but I believe that he's here already you know and verse 22 says, Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist, that denieth that the Father, the denieth the Father and the Son. Amen. You know, if a person denies the deity of Christ, he's an Antichrist. And there's a lot of people on this earth that deny the deity of Christ. And that's nothing but the Antichrist. That's it. It's that simple. God made this Bible so simple for a third grader to read and understand from from front to back. From front to back. A third grader. That's how simple the gospel is. You know. So. Now we're going to go to. Uh, Revelation. Six. Excuse me. Six. Twelve and seventeen. Okay. Okay. And it says, And I behold, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely fig, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a squirrel, when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their place, and the kingdom and the kings of the earth, and the great man, and the rich man, and the chief captain, and the mighty man, and every bondman, and every free man, 
hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountain and said to the mountain and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? Nobody's going to be able to stand. Whether you're a believer or an unbeliever. You know, once you start seeing mountains crumble, earthquakes happen, the sun turn to sackcloth, the moon turn to blood. I think even the most genuine, true believer of Jesus Christ's heart is going to be like sucked out of his chest. It's going to be like, uh, I can't move. You know, what am I witnessing? So imagine how an unbeliever is going to be at that moment. It's going to be, ah, screaming chaos, uh, uh, grabbing his head and hitting the concrete on the ground. And that's what's going to happen in the in Revelation. It says it. The men are going to grab their own heads and crack it on the concrete sidewalks right there. You know, it's going to be it's going to be perilous times. It's going to be stuff happening that we never thought was ever going to happen. What we see in movies is going to come to life times 10. It's going to make San Andreas look like a walk in the park. It's going to make it look like a cartoon. Let me tell you. And we're going to go to 12 and uh, 1 through uh, 17. And it says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with, ch with child cried, Travailing in birth and pain to be delivered and there appear another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head and his tail drew the third part of the stars out of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was cut up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he has but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time, for the, from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandment of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's how it's basically going to happen during the end times. And we're living in the last days right now. The last days. So get ready, family. Get ready because... It's coming soon. Rapture is a word that 99.9% .9 of Christians have heard over and over again. It's not in the Bible. The word rapture, you will never find it in the Bible as you read it. It's not in there. The word that, they're, uh, the, the word that a rapture replaces is the word caught up. Is where they get the word rapture. 99.9% .9 of Christians have heard it. You say rapture. Everybody knows it, even though it's not in the Bible, but there's a lot of words in the Bible that you tell a Christian, and they're like, I don't know. You know? No one can agree on when it will happen. <clears throat> no one can agree on when it will happen. You got this guy saying this day, you got this guy saying that day, you got that guy and that guy, and no one can agree on the day. <laughs> you know, that just should let you know that the Word of God is true, that no man knoweth. You know, and, and just leave it at that. 
And uh, no one knows the day it will happen either. All I can say is be ready at any given moment. It can happen. Any given moment. But like I said, you got to have the falling away and the Antichrist revealed first before the great day of the Lord happens. Okay? I was going to do the one on husband, man, but that one is going to take a while too. So I'm just going to save that for tomorrow's video. My brothers and sisters, I hope this video helped you in some way. And I pray that you have been reading your word. Uh, you've been uh, praying, fasting whenever you can. I know I don't do it as much as I should. The Lord Jesus Christ loves you. He's waiting for you. And don't give up yet, because remember, he said he's going to give us all a crown. You know, don't you want a crown? You know, we don't deserve it, but Jesus Christ is still going to hand us a crown. That's how much he loves us. Let's keep doing his will. Let's keep doing the Father's will on this earth. Uh, let's keep on seeking our Lord every day more and more as the day draws nigh. And I pray that this video will help you tremendously. And it first helps me, is because everything first comes to me. You know, I'm the first one that receives it. You know, it's, I, I say it, it comes, and then it goes out. You know, I pray, God, that that you liked it, that you've uh, enjoyed watching it. I know these videos are long, and I'm, I'm sorry, but I just, I got to share what I got to share, what the Holy Spirit wants to share. You know, I think it's important. I think it's very important that we have, that we dedicate however many minutes this video is, but we can watch a basketball game for three hours without a problem. We can watch a football game for three hours without a problem. And what are you get, getting from that? Nothing. Just at the end, you get scores. 23 at 22. That's all you get at the end. I mean, how's that going to help you? It's not going to help you in no way. You know, so just... Uh, but the flesh never wants to do that. The flesh would rather watch a basketball, football, baseball, hockey, whatever it is that you're into. You know, which I think is just a waste of time, honestly, you know, because it takes you from reading your word, from praying. Not saying that when basketball season comes, I'm like, I'm going to dedicate these three hours in the Bible. No, I'm not saying that either, you know, so, but we already waste enough time as it is. So I hope it helped you. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I love you. Jesus loves you. The Father loves you. The Holy Spirit loves you. I pray that you have peace in your heart, that you have joy in your life, and thank you for watching again. Let's see how many likes we can we can get and um, how many views we can get, and all the honor and glory to my Lord Jesus Christ, and I thank you very much for watching. God bless you, brothers and sisters. I love you.